David Questenberry, you are the newest member of the Minnesota Vikings. Welcome in the Vikings now by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman, and we are getting active here. The Vikings have already made two signings today, and they have also waived Jalen Rager. So Quasi Adolfo Mensa, he is staying active the day after they had to finalize their 53-man roster. So on today's show, I'm going to be giving you guys everything you need to know about the Vikings' newest offensive lineman. And who knows, maybe he'll need, add some much-needed protection for our quarterback, Kirk Cousins. But it was Mike Garofolo who broke the news literally probably about an hour after you're seeing this. And he said the Vikings are signing offensive lineman David Questenberry to the active roster pending a physical. That's a very important kind of a tea leaf right there. He's going to have to um, he's gonna have to pass that physical, and he's going to have to pass it to uh, obviously make the Vikings, you know, active roster. But we're going to dive into everything you need to know about him. But, guys, before we do so, hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a video out even again later today around the Vikings practice squad. So make sure you guys subscribe. Stay in the loop. No matter what the content is, no matter what the news, rumors, piece, we are going to have a video for you guys ASAP. So subscribe. Block us in if you have not already. But let's do it. Let's break down David Questenberry, the newest member of the Minnesota Vikings. Because, honestly, the Vikings have had a need for interior offensive linemen. He's really played all over in his NFL career. He's played swing tackle for a little bit, but most recently he has been on the interior of the offensive line. And last year for Buffalo, he did have his worst year um, in his NFL career. He is 33 years old, but his PFF grades, he didn't really grade out too, too well. But I will say he graded out better than a guy like Ed Ingram. His overall grade was 59.3, um, and then he also had a 62.3 pass blocking grade, and his run blocking grade was 53.7. And I will say this, in 2021, when he was a right tackle for the Tennessee Titans, um, he had an overall grade of 79.1, which was 18th amongst all tackles. So just keep that in mind. Like He did have a bad year last year. But, again, the year before, he was extremely solid. And here's how the Vikings offensive line kind of shapes out right now. Um, listen, he is a swing tackle, but he can also hop in the interior. He can really play all five. But I do expect him to mainly be a swing tackle. So that's why I'm kind of curious to see where, you know, a guy like Ole Uda is going to go. Like, maybe Ole Uda hops in and he's playing a lot more guard. Or maybe this is just like you're using him as – just a straight-up backup option, and that's where he, what he's going to be. Um, but who knows? Maybe he could even start over a guy like Ed Ingram or Ezra Cleveland if they have to miss a game for whatever reason. But this is the ninth member on the Vikings offensive line. They only kept eight yesterday, so a lot of people are kind of saying, like, oh, could they go out and sign a guy like Dalton Reisner, which we'll talk about here in a second. But they did end up signing David Questenberry. Just some general info about him. He is older. He is a 33-year-old offensive line, but he's six foot five, really big dude, 310 pounds. He went to San Jose State uh, for his college ball, and then the last team he played for in the NFL was the Buffalo Bills, and he was drafted all the way back in 2013. God, it feels like so, so long ago. He was a six-round pick, picked uh, 176. But I want you guys, I want you guys to grade the move of signing David Questenberry. Obviously, he's got to pass that physical and everything. But let me know your thoughts. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F down in the comment section. I'll make this pinned comment on today's video. So if YouTube hits you with the YouTube ad break, you guys know what to do. Let it play. Go down there. Answer today's pinned comment. And then when the ad's done, you can scroll right back up and, let, and you guys can hear what I have to say. So overall, I'm going to give this move a B. Um, I just think it's a solid depth move. Like, I know we say that all the time. It's a super cliche for, like, media members to say, like, oh, solid depth move, solid depth move. But it truly is. Like, I think this is just a solid depth move. Obviously, he was much better in his 2021 campaign with the Titans than he was last year with the Buffalo Bills where he played more on the interior. So I really think this is just a guy where you can, you know, slot in at any uh, four of the offensive line positions besides center if a starter would have to go down. And it will make this point about Ed Ingram. Could he just flat out replace Ed Ingram? I think it's unlikely. I think they still want to obviously, you know, you know, put some faith and put some, uh, you know, trust in Ed Ingram that he's going to take that next step in year two. But let's just say Ed Ingram goes out there and he struggles and he's not looking too good in the beginning of the season. Um, you know, could he potentially be the replacement 
um, for Ed Ingram, and maybe the Vikings want a more veteran unit next to Garrett Bradbury. I also just kind of thought about it. The Vikings could have Garrett Bradbury at sec center and Questenberry at right guard. I think that would be pretty funny if they had to roll that out. But he could potentially be a replacement for Garrett Bra or for Ed Ingram. And I will say this about the Dalton Reisner stuff. Um, it's probably dead. Uh, yeah, the Dalton Reisner hope and the pipeline dream of him signing for the Vikes, uh, I, I got to assume it's got to be dead here. Um, listen, I, I, I would have loved to bring in Dalton Reisner, um, but I don't really know what was kind of holding that up. But, hey, Quasey and Kevin O'Connell, they decided to go with David Klesenberry as another offensive lineman they signed. I'm assuming the line or the moves on the offensive line are done. But who knows? Maybe they got a couple more moves up their uh, sleeve here. But I'm going to end the show. Uh, I just want to run through all the depth charts because obviously with uh, Jalen Rager getting waived and the Vikings just making multiple moves here, um, you know, this is how their depth chart's looking right now. The running back room added a name today. They added Miles Gaskin. Obviously, Madison, Ty Chandler, they're going to be the one-two punch. But I do think this kind of, uh, I think this kind of means the Vikings are going to be going for a more running back by committee this upcoming year. I think it's going to be a three-headed monster of Madison, Chandler, and Gaskin with Gaskin kind of being the more pure pass catcher. If you kick at the wide receiver right now, you still got the three-headed monster in Jefferson, Addison, and Osborne. But hey, Jalen Rager's not there uh, anymore. It's going to be Blake or Brandon Pohl be the punt returner this year for the Vikes. And Jalen Naylor, I would assume, would be the solidified wide receiver four when the Vikings do run four wide receiver sets. Now let's kick at the DB here. No changes uh, from this morning, but you're still rocking with the, those three on screen right now with Murphy, Booth, Evans, and then Blackman and Najee Thompson. Bold move out of Kwesi Dofa Mensa to you know, only keep five corners, and Najee Thompson's really a special teams guy. So he's putting a lot of faith in those big four, and Murphy, Booth, Evans, and Blackman, that they're going to be able to get it done. And, hey, they're going to have a hell of a test week one when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roll in with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. With the offensive line, you know, we already kind of talked about it, but, you know, David Questenberry, he could really play any position besides center. Um, you know, maybe this means Oliuda is going to be your backup interior offensive lineman with Schlopman and Blake Brandell and David Questenberry will be your backup swing tackles for the Vikes. But, you know, who knows how that really is going to play out. We're just going to have to wait and see. If we kick at the linebacker now, no real moves here. The debate really at the linebacker spot is going to be if it's going to be Ivan Pace or Brian Asamoa starting. And then at the safety position, this was a shocker. They kept six safeties. They're going to be able to run a lot of multiple safety looks, you know, Keeping six safeties, I said it yesterday, but, you know, that's probably the most in the entire NFL of a team having, like, the most safeties on their active 53-man roster. The Vikings end up keeping six. Tight end unit, they kept four. They kept a lot of tight ends. You know, keeping six safeties, four tight ends, and a fullback, not really the norm in the NFL, but, you know, hey, new regime here in Minnesota, and that's how they like to do it. But Hawk and Oliver, I think they're going to be one of the best tandems uh, or tight end tandems in the entire league. And the interior defensive line, no changes here. Dean Lowry, Kyrus Tonga, Harrison Phillips, Jacqueline Roy, and Jonathan Bullard will hold it down there. In the edge department, still got those big or the big two dogs right there, Daniel Hunter and Marcus Davenport, with obviously, you know, the rotational guys and DJ Wanham, Andre Carter, and Patrick Jones. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's show. If you guys are new here to the channel, make sure you guys lock us in. Hit that subscribe button. Any moves at all around this team, we are going to have a video for you guys. ASAP. My, my, my uh, boy Tex and I, we hopped in the studio. I had to knock this out for you guys as soon as we could. So make sure you guys subscribe. Lock us in for all Vikings news. And as always, Skull Vikes.